As the pros continue to hit the ball ever increasing distances, golf's governing bodies, the USGA and the RNA, now worry it has literally gone too far. Indeed, there is repeated concern that there is not going to be enough golf real estate to cope if this trend continues and the older and even not so old golf courses will soon become redundant as their defences become increasingly useless against golfers hitting the ball further and further. But when we look at golf distance and golf courses, what is the reality when considering how many yards a long golf course actually is? In this video, we analyse how long both a long and short course really are, take a look at average golf course lengths throughout the world, answer how long a course has to be to qualify as a full length golf course, and finally explain why the vast majority of amateur golfers are actually playing golf courses which are far too long for them. Length when it comes to golf courses is clearly a subjective term. A 6,000 yard golf course for a beginner who can only drive the ball about 100 yards will feel like a monster. However, a scratch golfer is more than likely to think that such a golf course is relatively short. When considering the length of a golf course, it is also important to remember that its total length is different from its playing length. And this difference can be summarized as follows. Golf course length is the total length of the course from the longest set of tees listed in the scorecard, while playing length is the length of a course from the tees a golfer plays off or during any competition. The playing length of a course can therefore clearly vary from golfer to golfer playing in the same golf course from different tees and from day to day of PGA Tour tournaments, for example, when the tees and pins are moved each day. Whichever measure of length we look at, however, it is clear that there has been a long-term trend of both increasing total golf course length and playing length of golf courses over the years. According to the USGA and RNA's annual Distance Insights report, the playing lengths of elite championships such as the four majors and PGA and DPA World Tour events have increased at an average of between 7 and 12 yards per year over the last several decades. Indeed, of the top 100 American golf courses in Golf Digest's most recent rankings, 18 have hosted at least one major championship since 2000, and those 18 courses have lengthened significantly more than the other 82 in the list. Meanwhile, the total length of all golf courses has gone up by an average of about 10 yards per year for the past 120 years. And as we can see as a result, a 7,000 yard course is only among the top 10% longest courses in Great Britain, Great Britain and Ireland, Australia and New Zealand, and would not be listed as one of the longest courses in either Canada, Japan or the United States. In the US, to count among the top 10% of longest courses, a course needs to measure more than a whopping 7,225 yards, while a 6,800-yard course is classed as only an average-length golf course in both Canada and Japan, and only just about above average in the USA. It would, however, just about qualify as one of the longest courses in Great Britain and Ireland. Like many statistics in golf, however, they are often best taken with a pinch of salt. Just because the total length of the golf courses look very long to us mere motor amateurs, that doesn't mean the playing length of these courses for regular players comes anywhere close to any of these numbers. And to be honest, they should not in any case, as golf is much better enjoyed and indeed played much faster when golfers play from tees that match their ability rather than any concept of wanting to play a long golf course. It should also be remembered that many golf courses have been lengthened in areas where demand for golf has outstripped supply for the simple reason that longer golf courses help accommodate more golfers. But while the overall trend in ever-increasing golf course length over the past decades is undoubtedly there, whether you're playing what is defined as a long golf course or not doesn't really matter. As we will highlight clearly later in this video, the overwhelming majority of golf courses throughout the world are plenty long enough for regular amateur players. As we have already mentioned, the same golf course can be both a short and long golf course. Since the popularity of golf began to seriously take off from the mid-1950s, many golf courses started to add multiple tee areas to provide vari variable length options to their designs and accommodate golfers of differing skill levels, including drive and distance. In the US especially, there can be four, five and even six tee options, providing multiple playing lengths for golfers, while in the UK and elsewhere, 
a standard white, yellow and red tea setup has tended to be the most common. But what does that mean in terms of how you could define a short golf course? The shortest 10% of golf courses in the US measure 5,241 yards and under which is 22% shorter than the average golf course. The shortest tees at a course are known as the forward tees and according to the USGA Driving Insights report, forward tees have been getting shorter by about 16 yards per year since the 1950s. The ideal golf course architecture, of course, aims to give golfers who play from shorter tees a similar playing experience to other golfers capable of hitting the ball further, but it is not, but it is not always an easy thing to achieve. The forward tees in some courses also can sometimes not be that short and can measure in excess of 6,500 yards, a distance which the USGA's Tee It Forward campaign proposes requires a player to have an average driving distance of over 250 yards to be able to tackle effectively. Further, and despite the fact that playing shorter golf courses tends to increase amateur golfers' playing enjoyment as they tend to match better their skill level, many players, especially in the men's game, find it difficult to play off tees which make the golf course they are playing shorter. Many beginner golfers do not start learning the game by going straight to play in a full-length golf course. Golf is a hard game as we know and those new to the game have a lot to learn which is why it is recommended to start playing golf by taking some lessons in the driving range. As players get better however there inevitably comes a point when they want to stop practicing and get playing in an actual full-length golf course and the question therefore often arises to what actually constitutes a full-length course and how long a course must be to be classed as one. As a general rule, a full-length golf course is made up of any 18 holes that have a par which conforms to the rates of par based on the distances set under the rules of golf. These guidelines specify a par 3 be less than 250 yards, par 4s be 250 to 470 yards, Par 5s are 471 to 690 yards and par 6s are 691 yards and over. So it is clear from these guidelines that there is no minimum length that a course must be to be considered a full length golf course. A golf course of 18 short par 3s measuring only 100 yards each could legitimately call itself a full length golf course although such a golf such a course would admittedly and rightly be considered very short. In reality, however, very few regular golfers would consider such a course to be full length and for a more practical view of what would be considered a full length golf course, a better guide can perhaps perhaps be found by going all the way back to the 1890s when the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews emerged as a rule-making authority for the game. The St Andrews rules at that time stated that a round of golf comprised 18 holes and as the golfing community then aimed to find other golf courses across Great Britain that best imitated the example of St Andrews, it is apparent the golf courses which were then considered to be the best were the ones that approached and exceeded 6,000 yards in length. Such courses, it was viewed, provided the essential elements of a test of golf, that a round of golf should require a player to use every club in the bag, and that over a course of a round, a player should be required to demonstrate a full range range of skills with these clubs. Interestingly, this influence can also be seen in one of the most iconic courses in the United States, Pinehurst, North Carolina. According to the RNA USGA's analysis, the evolution of golf course lengths across the world began at Pinehurst in 1898 with the building of a nine-hole number one course, but by 1900, number one had been expanded to 18 holes with a course length of 5,176 yards. Similarly, the iconic Donald Ross design number two course at Pinehurst started its life as a nine hole course in 1901, but by 1907 it expanded to 18 holes with a length of between 5,680 yards and 5,770 yards. So, if we look at the original and traditional great courses of the world, a full length golf course could legitimately be considered to be any length between 5,000 to 6,000 yards. However, in reality, it seems clear that there is no such thing as a full-length course and as long as a course conforms to to the PAR guidelines, it can be viewed as full-length. While there are plenty of people now in golf who worry that the viability of the original great courses of the world are in danger because of the distances players are hitting the ball today, those original course-length guidelines provided by the iconic courses at St Andrews and Pinehurst 
still look incredibly relevant and accurate when you look at the distances amateurs are actually hitting the ball in the modern game. When my golf spy published the 2021 Arcos distance report for amateur golfers, their first key takeaway from the stats was as follows. In general, golfers are not playing many long courses, but many golfers are still playing courses that are too long given their median driver distance. And this insight was based on their mapping of the guidelines of the USGA's Tee It Forward guidelines for selecting tees, both the distances, the millions of drives hit by users of Arcos, golf's first artificial intelligence shot tracking platform. Tee It Forward is a joint initiative between the USGA and the PGA of America that encourages players to play from a set of tees best suited to their driving distance and lists the following distance guidelines for players to select the right tees for them to play off. And when Arcos overlaid these recommended yardages, they estimated these percentages for how many players should roughly be playing what yardages. However, when Arcos then looked at how well Arcos users followed the USGA's Tee It Forward recommendations, they clearly found that a large number of golfers, and especially those players hitting the ball the shortest distances, are playing courses which are far too long for their skill level. When it comes to selecting a course yardage in which tee box to play from, golfers are often influenced by who they are playing with. Old habits also die hard and are hard to break, while it is also not always possible to play a course at a specific yardage. However, what is clear from the data is that amateurs in general are typically playing golf courses which are far too long for their skill level, and while getting golfers, especially male players, to move up a tee box is not always an easy thing to do, it is more likely it will improve your enjoyment of the game by removing the need to constantly be hitting long shots outside your capabilities. It can also simply be good fun to see how your course plays from different tees, as well as being an easy way to help improve your game. Whatever you do though, just don't keep playing a course from tees for the sole reason that you think it's a good thing to be playing a long golf course. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it useful. And most importantly, enjoy your golf.